Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing our study of the Gospel of Matthew by looking at the birth uh, narrative, Matthew chapter 1. We're going to begin reading with verse 18, and we're going to read through verse 25. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, desired to put her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place, that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. That's from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Joseph arose from his sleep, and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took her as his wife, and kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and called his name, and he called his name Jesus. Now, it's important for us also to remember Luke's account of the birth of Jesus, because he gives the account from the perspective of the women involved, Mary and Elizabeth, uh, her cousin, who is the mother of John the Baptist. And, and we, we, we understand uh, from Luke's gospel that, that, that Mary, Mari in, in, in Aramaic, who was betrothed to Joseph, went to visit her cousin far away, stayed there for several months, and came back pregnant. And that's the place Joseph finds himself in as we begin reading. Um, the birth of Jesus Christ... From the very beginning, the very first verse, uh, Matthew's going to refer to Jesus as Jesus Christ, Jesus, uh, Yeshua, Messiah. Yeshua, the Old Testament name Joshua, name Joshua, which translated means God is salvation. Um, that's Jesus' given name, Joshua, Yeshua, which is how they would have pronounced it in, in the first century, in first century Aramaic, to the best of our knowledge. Um, uh, Mashiach, Messiah, or Christos in Greek, the tr Greek translation of that Hebrew word, means the anointed, the one who is anointed. And it is the name of God's special Savior that is predicted in the Old Testament, and that they have a great deal of expectation for, whom they have a great deal of expectation for in the first century. Messianic expectation could not be higher. It is such that Christianity explodes and Judaism rebels against Rome and is destroyed. I mean, it's the messianic expectation of the people and the coming of Jesus that bring about all these events. Um, and so Jesus is Jesus Messiah. Christ is not his last name. Christ is who he is, G Yeshua Messiah. So Mary and Joseph uh, are betrothed. Um, Betrothal is a binding agreement. It is as binding as a marriage. It is a marriage covenant. Uh, when you are betrothed to someone, your relationship is covenanted but not consummated. It is marriage without some of the primary benefits of marriage, and there was a necessary time of betrothal. Um, girls were usually betrothed between the ages of 14 and 16, sometimes as early as 12. But 17 would be considered late to be betrothed. Girls were not married until they were 16 or 17 years old, maybe 15. Uh, but that's the best information we have from the first century. Men married later, um, probably around the age of 27, 28, 29, 30. Uh, 30 seems to be the date at which a man was considered fully mature. Um, but uh, he would have been a bit older uh, than her, but that was their culture. 
that's what they, I mean, that's what they were used to. So he would have been of a different generation, really. But in their culture, he was a primary marriage age, marriageable age, man in his late 20s, maybe 30. And she was a, a, a young woman of marital age, 15, 14, 15, 16 years old. So uh, she goes away. She comes back pregnant. Joseph, that's what he knows. Uh, and look at the good man Joseph is. Um, uh, most men's testosterone would have been insulted by this and would have been ugly about it. I mean, th let's just face it. 90 or 95 or 99 men out of 100 would have been ugly about this, either aggressive or passive aggressive about this, but not Joseph. Joseph does not want to shame her or hurt her. He wants to keep this as quiet as possible, but he does feel it necessary to end the relationship because she's carrying, to his knowledge, another man's child. Until the angel of the Lord, and we only assume this is Gabriel because he, uh, he's the person, he's the, the, the personage, the angel who is the announcer in the book of, uh, in the book of Luke, uh, speaks to him in a dream. Dreams are going to be important in Matthew's birth narrative and throughout the, the book of, of Matthew. Um, you speak to him in a dream and say, no, 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 this child is not the product of that kind of a liaison. This child is created the way the, the universe was created, uh, created by the Holy Spirit. So go ahead and marry her. Um, so, so he does. Um, and, um, and he, and he does not, um, consummate their marriage until after Jesus is born. And then he and Mary have several children together. Uh, who are the brothers and sisters of Jesus. Um, and this is, again, a fulfillment of prophecy. Fulfillment of the prophecy that we have in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, a virgin will bear a child. Um, the, 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 the word um, Alma uh, in, or, uh, in the Old Testament, uh, many uh, commentators will, will like to argue that that's not really the word for virgin, it's the word for young maiden. And yet the word assumes virginity in the way uh, the word um, police officer assumes you're a human being. You know, if I say police officer, you don't have to ask, well, is it a human being or a monkey? Uh, and, and if you say that Hebrew word, you don't have to ask if they're a virgin because it is assumed in the word. Um, and um, so um, it, Jesus' birth is, is the fulfillment of that prophecy. Um, we could spend some time going back to Isaiah and talking about dual fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies, but I don't know that that necessarily has to be part of our, of our conversation in our study of the Gospel of Matthew. Okay, so she gives birth to a son. They name him Jesus. This happens in Bethlehem, uh, which we're going to read in the next verse, and we'll talk about that when we're together next time. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes.